If you are looking to learn uh, more about SQLite and uh, how you can build your very first app using this wonderful database, uh, then you have come to the right place. In this video, I will do my best to show you everything you need to know about SQLite. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So if you don't know what is SQLite, so SQLite is just, you know, a database, right? It is not like Firebase or, or Superbase because these tools allow you to do a lot of things like uh, authentication, cloud functions, and the database. But SQLite only allow you to do the database. So it, so it allows you to store and read the data from one simple file that will be packed within your app when it is installed by other users. So uh, this is all you need to know about uh, SQLite it is and of course it is 100% free so if you are looking to save some money uh, on the backhand cost so SQLite is uh, the best option for you and in this video you will learn a lot a lot about it so the first thing to do is to create our SQLite files but you might say how to do that so it's very simple so you need to download one uh, tool called the uh, uh, database browser for SQLite so I have already downloaded that and, in, and installed it. You can just download it and extract it. So it is up to you. So you can actually, after you have downloaded that or installed that, you need to go to the file and then open the database browser for SQLite. So open that. And now uh, this actually, this tool will allow us to create uh, our database file because as I told you, we don't need a server or to pay for a tool to host or just save the data for our users or our app actually we we can only use one file so this is what we are going to be creating in this video so or in this part so uh, all of what you have to do is to go to the new data database click on that and then give it a name so maybe so i will create a to-do list app so that is why i will name my database to do right and I will save it in the desktop. So, and then I will click on save. So now uh, that is it. it is very simple. Just close that, don't do anything. So I will go to my desktop and here it is. So now we have successfully created this uh, particular database file. So now what, what you have to do before you move on to the next step is to go ahead, download database browser for uh, SQLite and then create your file and after that, you can move on to the next step. So before we move on and actually start the structure of our database file, I would like just to explain things to you because uh, uh, you have to know some new notions before you move on and get started with the SQLite. So, and you might say why I have used spreadsheet for this explanation. Uh, the reason why I have done this is uh, so SQLite is somehow a big spreadsheet so now let's imagine that the database file we have just created is this particular project so now uh, inside each database file or sqlite file we have what we call a table or a list of records i will give an example so i will first create a a, a table for students so this is the name of uh, the table so the table will be below it of course so uh, so this was this just a name right so for each student what what do we have we have name so this is the first thing and here we have the age and here we have sex right so these are the three data we have on each student we have in the class so the first one i will give it a name is john he has uh, like 12 years old and he is a male right and here we have sophia for example this one has or is actually uh, 15 years old and it is, as you guessed, female. And here we have Maria, for example. She is uh, 10 years old and he, she is a female, right? Now, uh, I will just give it a, a color so you can get a better idea. So I'll give it this color so it's because it is going to be a separate table. So again, so these notions that I am saying, table, stuff like that are the same in SQLite so this is called a table or a list of documents or records so in this in this case the documents or the records are students so if you are familiar with Firebase this is what we call a collection so a collection of a lot of documents it is called table we inside the SQLite so now with this table what do we have so we first have the columns the first column so i want you to guess what is the name of the first column 
So obviously it is called name. So this is the first column. And you can say that it is a column from the way that it is illustrated here. So it's a column which is vertical. So what is the name of the second column? So the name of the second column is H. So the same goes for the third column. So now we have two notions. We have first the table and with each table we have a column or and actually each column means certain data of uh, the student in this case. So now what is the, the, the last notion which is called a row, right? So what is the row? So now the row is the record, is that person. So since so we have a table called student, then each row is a student. So the first one is the so the, the first row is the one for John, the second one is for Sophia, and the third one is for Maria. So now this is actually all you need to do, or sorry, all you need to know about uh, SQLite. So the first one is we have a table, it has a name, and the table has the columns and rows. So each row has columns. So just, you know, keep in mind or just, you know, remember this example because this is all you need to do. And keep in mind that we inside each file so this is uh, so this is the the sqlite file we have created before so just imagine that it is the this file but it is not the, what we have created previously just imagine that we can also have another table of maybe we can call it uh, uh, teachers so we can have it and we can just give it another color to make it easier for you to understand so this is for so we have the same we, we can have name we can have the age and we have sex. So we can add a list of uh, students, oh, sorry, of teachers, and we can have as many tables as we want. So, so please, I would like that you repeat this part so you can understand these new notions because I cannot repeat them uh, the, along the video. So just repeat this video, sorry, so repeat this particular uh, part and then I will meet you on the next step. So now we have understood some new notions about uh, SQLite. So now I just want to close that and then just get this one down. And now we, so this is our database file we have created in the first, in the second part of this video. Now it's time for us to go and start structuring this particular database. And if you are familiar with Firebase, whenever we create a new project, we have to create a collection and we have to set some structure for that collection. So the same goes for this one. So it is actually the same goes for any backend provider, whether it is Firebase or Superbase. We always create the first project and then we, we give it a structure. So this is the same we will do here. But now you might ask me how we do that. So you need to install another small tool called SQLite Studio, right? And just for you to know that if we have if so we can actually use the database browser for sqlite so the one that we use to create this, this uh, database we could have used that to make the structure but i like this tool that is why i will have to use another one but if you can just use the first one and uh, it is totally fine but i will use this one instead so now i have already a database open for another app that i am working on so now i want to add this one here i want to add it so how we do that? So it is very, very simple. All you have to do is to go to database and uh, add a database. So you want to add another database within SQLite Studio. So now they will ask you for the type. So we are just using this one. Forget about all of the others. Now just set the location. Where have you saved that? So click here and go to desktop for me. Here I have saved this in the desktop. So click there and then click on OK. So now it will be open. Now you might say, hey, what, what is this? So now I am on the old uh, database, the other one. So I have to click here twice or you can just click, come, click, click here, right click here and then click on create table. So I have already done that. So you can go inside this one, right? And you can switch that by clicking here and go to commitment and uh, here you can go to to do right so you can switch between them just from here so you can just watch some other tutorials so you can get familiar with this tool so but now let's just talk about the basics so now the first thing to do is to go here so we are inside the to do database and 
the first thing I want to do is to add a column. So, and so now you may ask me, what are you going to build in this video? So I will be building a to-do list app. So now I want to have a table called tasks. So that's the first thing. So give it a name. So once you have given, so once you have uh, given it a name, you want to add the first column. So what is the, so a column is the first data about that task. So the first thing to do, so, so for each task, what do we have? We have the name, right? We have the name and what, you, so the name is going to be a, a text that is very, very simple and basic, right? So add, he click here to add another data for that. So we have, we need date. And for those of you who have been using Firebase, you know that we have a data type called date time, but here we do not have that. Instead, we only, we only have text. So the date can be a text as you will see, just keep it that way. And I will show you everything you want to see. So uh, just keep it text and you will understand later on. So click on okay. So now for the last one is whether the, the, the task is done or not. So. Uh, what do we call that in Firebase? So we call it Boolean with it false or true. So here we don't have that. So the same thing that happened with date will happen with done. We don't have a Boolean as you will see here. So we don't have a Boolean, but we can use an integer. So now what is Boolean? It is going to be true or false. And done will be one or zero. If it is true, then it is one. If it is false, then it is zero. So we will be using that. And some of you can actually use the text and go ahead with true or false, but an integer one or zero is the best option. So just do that because that's the, the most effective option I have ever seen. So click on okay. So now there is one thing that is missing. And those of you who have been following my videos on Firebase, you will see that, that there is one thing that is missing, which is the ID or the reference. So because in this table, we can have like millions of tasks, but how can we separate one from the other one? So like I can see that three tasks can have the same name, the same date, and all of them can be done and we cannot have, uh, so how can we separate them from each other? So there is that there has to be one thing that we separate them, which is the ID. So now we don't have a reference. We have the ID. So I know it is, it is very, very special. So the ID is the primary key or do how we separate things from each other or the, pro, the reference or the identity of that record or row or document within our database. So set it to primary key and go to configure. But first thing, it has to be an integer. So why it is an integer? So because if we have 10 tasks, the first one will have one, the second one will have two, the third one will have three, so on and so forth. So each one will have an ID depending on its order in the database. So, but there is one thing that we have to do, which is the go to go to configure and say auto increment, which means that with each task created, it will be incremented. So one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. So this is why you have to check the auto increment. So if we have created the first one, then it will become two. If we have created the second one, then it will be incremented to three, so on and so forth. So click on apply and click on OK. That is it. So we have successfully structured our database within SQLite Studio. Now, the last thing to do is to click here and click on OK. And you will have, you know, this uh, sign that tells you you have successfully committed the changes for this table. So now our, our work is done within SQLite Studio. So make sure please to apply everything I have told you, uh, install SQLite Studio. You will be using this tool a lot if you are going with SQLite and there are, there are a lot of things to, to learn about this tool and I will meet you on the next one. So make sure you apply everything I have told you this step and I will see you on the next step. So once we have like finished with SQLite Studio and we have prepared our SQLite and by the way, I have forgotten to tell you that all of the changes we have made here inside of SQLite Studio will be applied in this uh, file. So they are automatically applied there. Don't worry about anything else. So now I will go back to Flatflow and I will start a new uh, project. So you can click here and now we want to give it a name. 
so and by the way if you are new to flutterflow if you have never opened uh, an account with flutterflow so make sure you go to the link in the description down below click on it and you will create an account for completely free so just click on the link down below it is an affiliate link if you click on it and if you use flutterflow but through that link you will help this, ch this channel a lot so i can create more videos like this for free so please make sure you use the link in the description down below so here i can just give it a name and then click on create blank so now it is being created skip all of that it doesn't matter and you will be you know you will be landed in this uh, particular project so now we won't touch anything here we want to go first to the settings and we want to go to the integrations go inside sqlite and apply or enable sqlite so now the first thing to do so what we have been doing uh, this whole uh, video so from the start until this moment we have been preparing and working on uh, the uh, the database file so uh, we have been working on that so we can upload it here so this will be our database all of the data will be stored in this very very small database file so click here on upload and select it from your location and give it a name so just keep the same name very simple and very easy so now we have done that and right so that is it that's that is how we just add the database file so make sure you do that and we will move on to creating the ui and by the way you can skip the ui part you can follow along or skip it it is it is actually up to you so now i will go ahead and start building the ui for this app so just change that to my tasks and as i told you you can skip this i know it might be bo boring for some of you that is why i have broken this video into parts so skip it and i will meet you on the next step where we will be applying things but now for those of you who want to know how to build the ui who so of course those of you who are new to the field you may want to enjoy this one and just watch it so now i want to i want to I just you know change the name here in the app bar and uh, so i'm gonna close it and below the so here we have the home page inside the column i want to add the list view just like that and then inside of it i would add a container which will be the task i will just you know rename it so give it a name so or just you know just task and uh, i will just go ahead and uh, add a border for it so the color has to be the secondary and add some radius there so 15 and the height will be variable to depend on what how much so just what we have inside so it will be variable right and within that task we want to have we want to have uh, uh, a, a row first and the first thing we have inside that row will be the checkbox yes because we are going to be building a to-do list app we need that checkbox so this one this is the checkbox and beside that checkbox we want to add a column of two ta texts so the first text this one has to be bigger and bolder so uh, it has to be like uh, maybe uh, 18 and semi bold this is the title and duplicate that this one will be smaller of course and less bolder normal and i want to go to the column and put them on this side just like that so now we want to go to the tasks just re reduce the the radius uh, maybe just seven this is very very nice so i will go to the column the the grandfather here and add a padding to take it away from the edges of, of the screen so maybe just five is or seven is enough so i will also add like a padding between this row and this ta this container this will be a very very small uh, padding just four which is very good now we have everything we need and uh, this is the column this is the list view and below this list view i want to add an icon so an icon button and i want to 
to take it away from this list view so we go to the column and then go to e, this option to take it downside and add chain here the same here and also here or maybe you can add 20 if you want which means another chain so this is good so now this one will actually allow us to create so this if you click on this one you will actually open a new component here called create task and i will click on that click so now we have created a new component here inside of it at the background which is the container and check it down so go ahead to the alignment click here and for the width it has to be infinite the height should be variable depending on what we have inside but first i want to add a, some uh border here in these two corners so maybe 20 uh 15 is a good option so just like that and of course the height should be variable and we want to add a column inside now it is stretched go to the column and decrease the size and now i want to add first we have the text field just like that and just remove this uh padding that that comes by default with that and always add the padding between the column and this container come here and say five or seven good the type of the text field i like to always always have or use this outline type and that is it so for the label we don't want the label we always so i think that in this case we we will only use the hint text so the one just to give it a a hint for the user so they can know that they will have to add the name in this field so just to hint them or help them so duplicate them no it's not duplicate i will have i will add i will add a button below that and the same goes so the same that thing that i have done for the text field i will do it for the button so just in terms of size so the, for the height it will not be uh, so it will be 50 so it is almost like the 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 text field above it and make it infinite so uh i think we have to add some padding go to the column and add like five and that is it this one uh, for the fill color it has to look like almost the text field and uh, for the text color so the border has to be the primary so we can have a border and also the text has to be the primary right so now it, it is visible so uh, i want to add another button this one will not be that big so it will be a bit higher but for the border radius it has to be a lot uh, you know i want to add more one add 50 so now it has to be it has to say create task this one has to say pick a date so that is that is the first one that is uh, the, the very simple uh you know component now i will just do i will duplicate that to create the last component and i will go back and forth so and i will say update task so i will i have said update task and i will change this button i think that, that that's the only thing i will change the so update task so i will not go into details in this project so it will be very very basic but we will do a lot of complex stuff later on so now uh, we have pretty much done any everything but yes we have done everything except for the, the update when we want to update we won't give them a hint the name of the task will be there by default so that's why i want to use uh, the hint i want to use the initial value so something has to be there so they can remove it and change it so it has to be the initial value just like that and now we are ready to go and now we will move on to the next step i so sorry if this was boring but that is it I, now let's move on to the next step now we are going to get into the most exciting part so now we are going to be trying sqlite so now the first thing to do is to create the task so but now here inside of sqlite 
you cannot just get give it an action to this for example this button until it just create a task like firebase and it will do that no you have to first define that action or write the code of for that action but don't worry don't be afraid if you have if you heard the code the, the code word it is not that complex it's like so personally it is the most or the easiest code i have ever used in my entire life so go to sqlite and then go we you have two types of queries you have the, the read and the update so the read is just when you pick up the documents within your database file and you show them in your app the update it, it is actually three types you have create update and then delete all of these three are packed within this particular type of query so now the first thing to do or what we have to do here in this part is to create the task so click here and say create task so give it a name and here this is or here is where you will be writing the code so the first thing to do so by the way uh, just follow along with me i will try to create a video for you so you can know everything about sqlite query or just how to write the code for it because we in this example i will just go with the basics but if i made a video about sqlite code i will go into detail so make sure you just you know subscribe to the channel right now and turn on the bell icon so if i posted that you will be the first one to be notified or just check out the description it might be there i don't know so just you know just make sure to both subscribe to on the bell icon and also check out what what is inside of the description part so now if you want to create something with sql you need to say insert into so this is the term used to create something so insert into what so we want to insert something into a table right so i will open sql so here we have a table here in this database we have a table uh called task so this is the first table right so it's tasks and open and close brackets go inside so we if you want to create a task you need to put some data or columns so how do we know a task we know it from its name date done and id so this the id you cannot provide the id it is provided automatically so just provide the name date and done right so say name date and done and these three variables has to be you know provided from a variable so come down here because when you are creating that you will to you need to give it the data so it will it knows what to create and don't worry you will see this in action so just click here to add a variable so what is then the first variable which is called name so always keep it the same name right so don't don't change it click here and say date a string both of them and the last one is done gonna be an integer that is it now we want to provide those values so you want to say values open and close brackets go inside so the first one what is the type of that so it is a text that is why add single quotes two of them and go inside of them right dollar sign open the curly braces and close it and go inside again and give it the name so the name of the first variable his name right and so you, you can see that so you can actually just see how to write that so you know just you know i don't want to read that so it is very easy just hover over that icon and you learn more about how to write so how to add a variable within the code so add a comma and then add the so the date is a string so for that we want to add those single quotes go inside the, the and add dollar sign and open and close the curly braces go inside and say the name so this is the variable so add the name there and for the last one it is very easy you don't have to add this single quote because this is going to be an integer so just add dollar sign single uh, curly braces go inside and say the variable and the last line of code has you need to add this one so it's a point and a comma so add it in the last line of your code so now just click on add query so now we have added the query we have defined that so now let's apply that 
so in the home page we click here so this is just uh, you click here you go to the action on tap on tap this will just show the component show the component called create task now we want to go there and click on this button this one is what will create the task for us but before that for each task we need the name so we have its field but we don't have a field for date so we, we need to do that before click here on the button and on tap add action and search for date picker so so that button will pick up a date so here select date and you can play around with the other options i want don't want to waste time on that so now we have name date now we need to go and create the task so now this is the fun part so how we how we do that so just select it and click on on tap click on add action and now search for sqlite right so and so where our query so is it inside the root query no of course not it is inside the update query so click on update and select it so where it is it is create task that, that is why you give it you give them names so to know what you, what you are you doing so now you are to you so you are going to create a task right so you need to provide three things you need to provide the done the date and the name that is why they are or that is why we have used the variables right we we use variables and if we didn't use variables then things would have been different so just want to show it to you very quickly so if we haven't used variables then we would have to use the curly braces and the dollar sign and say like for example give it a name like buy a book so whenever you create a task it will have the same name over and over again so this was just an example so i will cancel that and now i want to create the task again go back here and now provide the variables click here the first variable is name so where we are going to take the name from we are going to take it from here this widget so click here value go to the widget stage and it is highlighted as you can see here so check it from there and the unknown so it has to be date and again from that date picket so you may say hey this is a date right but why we have set it as a text so front flow will automatically translate that into a text and you will see that later on so click here and now some of you may say that i am stupid right but it is not so just i have just forgotten to do that because now for some of you you might say hey you have to provide done but why the tasks are automatically not done so why why you want to do that so this is the this is so to be honest this is the stupid way of doing things is to make it from a variable and the smart way is to go inside of sqlite and click here and then remove it from here because why should it be a variable it is zero but by default the tasks when they are created they are not done so the done is zero by default why should you use a, a, you know a, a variable to do that so yes so i think i am stupid for that reason so just say click on zero and click on save so that will be the, the very effective way to do the to do things so once you have created that just click on uh, uh, dismiss and congratulations you have applied the create query within flutterflow so you have done a very great job but um, I want to make sure that you have applied this so please don't move on to the next step unless you have applied everything I have shown you in this particular step so before we move on uh, i just wanted to first thank you for keeping up with me and i just want i have a, a very small request so if you like it my video if you learned something from it so please do me a favor and give it a like so it will help this video reach more people and it will definitely help this channel and myself and of course if you are not subscribed yet to this channel so please make sure you subscribe to the channel right now so it will so this channel will grow and it may teach a lot of things to more people so just make sure to subscribe and like this video this will help a lot so just please do that and we will move on to the next step so now that we have like uh, you know we have 
successfully created the first task or just you know just added a query for creating tasks so now uh, what is the next thing to do so the next thing to do is to read those tasks so let's say you have created 10 tasks you need to see them so how can we do this inside of sqlite or just using sqlite so to do that we, we have to first as i told you uh, showing tasks is a query that is why we have to define it here so now we want to read things we want to you know bring things from the database file to our app so click on read query and add it so now we want to see get all tasks so this is the name you can name it the way you want because it will not make a big difference so now uh, what do i want to do here is to like uh, bring those so how to write the code so first you need to select you say select asterisk which means all from what so we want to select all the records from the table called tasks so that is what we want you know i think it is all we need because that is it we just want to get all the ta all the records from tasks if we wanted to filter them then it would be a different topic but we will touch this later on but the most important thing now is but first thing i want you to guess should, do we need a variable of course not because this is a read query you don't give it something right it's you read queries sometimes a read query can also have variables but for now we want everything so we want to pick them at all we don't need the filters if we had like filters we could use some variables to filter the results so now when it comes to the output columns this is the most important part in all of the read queries so now this is the the tasks table so here they call they are asking you for the output columns and if you hover over this you you see that specify the column that will be present in the output of this query so or in other words what do you want from this query so here if i query the tasks i need the name i need to see the name the date and whether the task is done or not so i will just define them here so make sure the same name you have given it for each column is the same here otherwise you will not get the data that you are looking for so name string date string and done integer so now this time we we do need the done field and add query so now it is not it so we should we should add it here so for the last view it will br should bring us all of that so go to, to this backend query add query and no we will not use firebase or api we'll go to sqlite query and select the the one we have just created and click on confirm and it will show you a list of that so the same for firebase so just go ahead and add some padding in item item spacing or just add seven just like that and now uh, there is nothing has changed we just have some copies so this has to come from a, a certain thing so this has to come from the name so it will be a variable it will come click here click so this is the query we have just did so open it and get the name so this is the output column uh, so you can add a, like you know something there uh, by a book just by default uh, by a book and here you want to say the date so click here date confirm you need to add so the form so uh, luckily we have i you know uh, the format that we are going to be using is this one so i will be just 2024 uh slash uh we are nine slash three space I need to do the hour right so now just give it like a random hour so 12 may maybe just 11 so it's not we don't have a.m. and p.m. so if you want to go to p.m. you need to add like 23 uh, 56 se and mi seconds and milliseconds this is the format so this is how so this is a string at the end it is a string 
So this is the format. Keep in mind we have year, month, day, hour, minute, seconds, milliseconds. So just remove remember that because it will help a lot. So confirm. And just one thing which is so now in this one, so let's say we have created a task, we want to see the date. So what if you just wanted to see this part? You don't want to see all of that. So count how many characters you have here. We have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten. So just come down here and say max characters allowed ten. So it will, you will see it in a clean way. So now the, for the final thing is the value of this checkbox. So if it is done, then it will be like this. If it is not done, it will be like this, right? So I will just come from a variable, condition value, and say if it is, I would say if, if the done output column, that is why we needed that. We needed the done column so we can know what to show here in, in this checkbox. So select done, you will say if done is equal to one, confirm, then it has to be checked. Otherwise it has to be unchecked, but I, I suggest you, Turn it on and then off. So you need to, you will avoid some errors. So click on confirm again. If it is done, then it will be checked. Otherwise, it will not be checked. Otherwise means if it is zero. So this is basically all you need to do. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next step. But please again make sure you have applied everything I have shown you in this part. So you need to be an action taker, not just an observer. So I will meet you on the next step. Now in this part we want to do just one thing which is done or undone a task. So now as I told you each query has to be defined first. So go to update because we want to so when you want to say done or undone, it is gonna be an update query, not to read. You are making some changes. So it is obvious by the way. So here I wanna say done undone. So Yes, so done, undone. And now you might say why you have put two names. So I will just first uh, say update tasks. So I don't want to update the whole, uh, you know, database. I just want to update, update one. But how to do that? I'll show it to you later on. So we want to update a task. So you want to set. So you want to say how to, you want to update that task. So here, set, they done equal to one no equal to something else i will explain to you later on so now as i told you here i don't don't want to update the whole database instead i just want to update one task but you may ask me how sh can i know what tasks to update let's say i have hundreds of tasks in my database file how can i know which one to update so that's why we have used that id so that's how you can differentiate the tasks from each other so come here and say so as i told you you want to update one task so that task has to have a certain id so keep so say where id is equal to a variable so uh, again so id does not need these two uh, simple or single quotes so go ahead dollar sign open close curly braces and say task id so you just want this task id task id right and for the last line in the code button and column and here so here you want to say done to what so now it is called done and undone at the same time how can we do that so now it will come from a variable actually so the done has to be either one or zero so the reason why I have combined them in one query because I don't want to add one query for done and one for the undone. So I want to put them in one single uh, uh, query. That is why I have used a variable. So it will depend. If I wanted to done, I will pass one. If I wanted to undone, I will pass zero. So the same uh, done. And since we have two variables, we have to define them. The first one is done. It doesn't matter the order, you can put them in any order you want. And task ID. Now let's go ahead and apply that. So for this checkbox, go to each its actions and say on page load, 
no sorry so i want you the page so go to, to the checkbox actions say on if you turn on or on toggle on add action search for sql light update done and done right so now it is on toggle on when it is on it will be done it will done that task it will finish that task or execute it if you want so let's first pass the first variable which is task id so what is where is the task id so since the, the checkbox is inside this list view that already has this query we will pick it from there so the task id has to come from this one open it and yes we don't have the id we don't have it so in this query so when we are going to be querying all of the tasks we have forgotten to query this id and now we need that so how to fix this problem go back to your sqlite you know part here and go to the read query go here and say add another column this is going to be an integer which is the id save very good so now if we came back here to find the task id we can click on the variable go to the get all tasks row and here you find it here now it is one of the output columns so click there now this update query knows what task to update just from its id now for the last one it is going to be done so now what 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 uh, data should we put here so now it is on toggle on as you can see here so when you toggle it on you will turn you will or the done field will be one which means it is done so copy this one copy the action open the action editor and add the, the other type of action which is on toggle off and then cut paste that and change one thing which is so now because when you turn it off you will undone that task so click here and set it to zero so that is basically how you do that so now let's go ahead and move on to the next step but again please apply every single thing i have done repeat the part if you want and i will show you i will sorry i will meet you on the next step so in this part we are going to be updating the task so as i told you again and again so with uh, whenever you want to uh, apply or use a query with the, whether it is a read or you know update query you need to first come and you know define that inside of uh, sqlite so i will have to go to update and here uh, so the update so we have previously done a certain type of update query so which is done and undone we update a task by changing or switching its done column so click there and here you will see uh how you know how we structured the uh the update query so i will just you know i will maybe i want to create it from scratch so you can learn more so this one is to, i will call it update task so when we say update we mean update the name and the uh, date and the done column has been already updated using this query so uh, now uh, just like how we did with the, the last query so we we'll say update tasks and where the so we don't want to update all of the tasks so we need to specify which task using its id so where id is equal to a variable we will be providing to this query you know so just like that and then say task id so since it is a variable i would have to go and just define it here and it is going to be an integer that is it and so uh yes so right below that so i always say update where so you can understand but you have to put another code here so you want to set what things you want to change right so update tasks and we want to set uh so uh set and you will say what you want to change so so just like uh how we did previously we want to set the so we want to first i will open our database file so i can see the names of the columns so here we are inside of uh, our to-do uh, list 
a database file so we have we want to update the name and date so set name and you want to bring it from a variable again so it is an integer we want to open single quote and close it go inside a uh, dollar sign open and close curly braces go inside again and say name so the name will come from a variable right and below which we want to actually just actually you can do it just in one line so you can come back so add another comma and then you want to add the, the date so date will be equal to uh, another variable we will bring it from a variable and again it is an integer so single quote dollar sign curly braces and date or close curly braces and the single quote so now since this is the last line in the code we want to add this uh, symbol here which is a dot and a comma below it so now we have some other variables that was you can see here so let's define them here before we move on name which is a string not nullable and here we have date not nullable now let me just quickly explain this again to you so here we want to update all of the tasks but we have specified the id of the task we want and this query will have to know the task id that is why we have provided it with that as a, in a variable and when we will be applying this query we will give it you know this id so it can know what to update and the update operation consists of changing the name from this uh, you know the new name and also the date so if you want just to better understand this i will say new name and new date the same goes here so just to not confuse you it's because we have name name and date date so here i say uh, i say new name and here new date so now the the new date will be in in the place of the old date and so on and so forth so i will add this query now we have successfully added this query now or we have just defined the query now let's go back to actually a flutterflow or so we, we are already in flutterflow so but now let's just apply that so how to update some task here so i just want to add a pen icon which means that you if you click it on it you will have or you will be redirected to a page or a component in this case in this case a component where you will be changing the sum of uh, the data of uh, uh, this particular uh, task so here we have this row and here so we have the checkbox and this column and yes beside them we want we have that edit icon so click on the row and click on add icon so click here so you have add that icon you can come here and change it so you can say edit or modify i will have to, i will choose this one or you can choose whichever you want you can for the color you can just choose this one here and now we want it to be on this side so i have i have explained this in some previous videos but i will repeat them so here the first option or the first thing you may think of is to go to the row and then click on this i and this option and it will not work so because this option will try to space all of the uh, children away from each other as much as it can but this is not how it works so now we want to regroup these two uh, in one row so it will be considered as one child so i will wrap it into a, a row and then bring the column below it and close it and boom you see we have them now spaced away from each other now i can click on the icon go to the action and now we want to add an action so you may want to open the action flow editor if you like so here i want to say show and click here and say show update task so now here when we go to the update task here first the first thing that you will have to you do that you will think of is that we first need to have the name of that task as well as its date showing up here so we need to use what we call page parameters uh, sorry a component 
parameters so which are placeholders where we can pass those data from the home page from this document to this component this comp this uh, component right here so click here to add those parameters as you can see here click add click add parameter and say name which is which will appear here and it is an a string and it is required add date here so again string and required so now we have these two elements so now we have two errors because since they are required we have to pass them so we pass them in the navigation action so because here we have shown that component so we have to pass those uh, parameters so click here and pass the first one click here so the name has to come from that uh, you know that uh, read query so since this one is getting us all the tasks so for each task we will check the name and give it the, to the uh, component the same goes for date so we are inside a task open it and take the date right so now we can go back to the update task component and here this button has to update the task but you may ask me because so i will just show it to you click here click here and then on tab add action and search for sqlite so we have now we want to update the task so it is within the update query so click there and click on update task and provide the, the necessary variables so we have three so we need the the id so you see because now we are going to be updating a certain task so we need to know which task to update but now how can we know that so the same way we knew the name and date using the components we will be doing that for the id so add a new uh, parameter and call a task id is going to be an integer and it is certainly required so now uh, i want to i will go back to the home page to this icon and come down below here to pass that new parameter so click here and where should we bring it from we should bring it from the same place we brought the date and name so open that and check the id and close it now we can go back here go to this action now we have all of the, the variables here we can provide them all right so the query can will be successful so click here at the task id bring it from so here we want to update and where is the task id it is a component parameter and here it is so give it to the query which is update task so it can know what to do so here the new name will be the one from the new you know what you will put it here will be put instead in, in the place of the new name so click here and again so the new name has to be brought from uh, the this field right so click on widget and take from there so and now for the last one the new date it should be picked from here so this button has to be a date picker so click here open on tab add action and search for date picker so just like something like that and that is it you can change the thing change things the way you want so i will now go back here and now go to the back to the date click here and now the date will be brought from this button since it is going to be picking up the date so we will take that date and put it instead of the old date so open this widget and take it from here and it is highlighted as you can see so click there and confirm now pretty much everything is successful but uh, sometimes uh, so with sql i want you to keep one thing in mind so here if you didn't change something here then the query will not work so something has to change right so that just keep that in mind and uh, i would like just to go in depth with in this but not for now so now for the inside so now since we are going to be updating a task that has already a date we want to show the old date here or 
the date picket so it will be variable so i will show it to you so click on the button go to the text of the button or the button text and go to condition value so i would say that if just i will go to widget so or just you know come here condition simple condition and say if the date packet is set which means that some date has been packed right any date has been packed so if that was the case then we want to show that date right here instead of pick a date so since something was already picked we have to show that pick a date so click here and show it so since it is set then show it right click on date picket and you can go to the format and choose any format that you want i would like to to use this one and so here otherwise so if it is packed then show it here if it so show it instead of pick a date instead of this value otherwise what you show so if it, if i didn't pick a date i should show the old date so what is the old date it is a component parameter we have already passed that so we know the old date so click here and say date confirm right so now we have successfully applied the update task but just one thing i have forgotten which is to dismiss so click here and now for some of the advanced users uh, or people who are watching this video so i know that you may say you may so i'm sure that you have uh, you know seen a lot of you know areas where i didn't pay enough attention to because i have uh, so my intentions are that i actually decided to make this video for beginners so i don't want to go in depth so i will you know just my my focus will be on teaching you sqlite i'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to go in depth in some uh, conditions and stuff like that with flow it's not uh, the topic of today today's video so that that is why please don't complain in the comments so that this is for beginners and this is for sqlite nothing else right and just before i leave uh, this part we want to show the name of the task here so the initial value has to be that component parameter called name so we have to show it there so now let's move on to the next step but again as usual make sure you have applied every single thing i have said in this video and i will see you in the next step and now for the final part in this uh, particular uh, video so here we what if we wanted to actually just up a uh, uh, delete the, the the task right so here i would like to duplicate this one and wrap it into a row so i can add that button beside it so drag it here so here i want to say delete the task so now it has the same actions of course i will change that so the row has to space things away and uh, we have this error so uh, i think i should so reduce the padding here have lot of, lots of padding so it is here so reduce that 15 same here and then go to the row and put everything here in the center so go to this one change the color if you like so these are all optional stuff you can do so go to this one and now the delete task is also a update uh, query so let's define it here delete task so here we want to say delete from tasks so what you delete again we want to say where id is equal to an id that we will we will provide actually so the task id very simple and very easy so and also add this one uh, sorry i have forgotten we have to add that so it is going to be task id and it's going to be a integer so add query now we have added that we can easily now go back to delete task go to the actions and instead of uh, actually just forgotten to add one action for this one update task 
and then dismiss so and now we can go to delete task and now we just want to switch the query name to delete task and provide that one variable which is task id and if you remember it is already a component parameter so pick it from there and then just click here on dismiss and now everything is working very fine so now uh, our work actually is done but uh, uh, unfortunately i cannot run a test mode here on just you know i cannot do it just for, by clicking here like how we used to do because now sqlite cannot be tested on the web for now so i have to download this so if you don't know but you have to be on a standard or pro, pro plan if you are on the free plan you cannot do that so i am on the standard plan so click here and then go to and click on download apk so some of you know if you come from a, a coding background you can download the code and run it locally using like a using vs code or android studio and then you use a like an android simulator so you can run it here just on your device but now i will download it on uh, my device and i will mirror you know the i will show you the screen of my phone here on this screen so you can see the app so now we will be testing this app and i will meet you on the next step but again please don't forget to apply everything i have shown you so i have said this over and over again and i am sure you have got the picture so here we are now we are going to be testing this uh, app but i have made a mistake so i have downloaded the apk i have tried it on my phone but when i click on create a task it doesn't work because uh just if you focused with me in the create task part i have forgot this s so this is how i it was and when i click on create task the the app didn't find a task table in my database file that is why it nothing happened that's why always write things correctly so that's that was the only thing that, that i have fixed but for for now i will mirror the app here and you will see so now uh now you are taking a look at so i'm using let, let's view so by the way i have done with the apk so and i have sent it to me uh, from my pc to actually my phone using whatsapp and you can use email download it uh, and do whatever you want just send it to your phone anyway so now it is not here so i will just switch and it is to do so now i will click on it and now you will see now uh first i have already cr created a task now i will just add another one so i will say task two and then pick a date 17 this month and then click on create task and you see it is called task so i can done it and done it do the first one as well so it, everything is working and you see you know the format of the date is very very cool and actually and uh, i will i can click on this icon but uh, so i will just click on it and maybe so uh, date two will be changed to i will add something to okay and then i will change from 17 to 12 and nothing works so i cannot change but let's 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 try changing just you know the uh the the you know the name and now i will click on update task it doesn't work as i have told you something both of the uh, the, the fields has to be changed the task uh, the the name and also the date but now uh, there is a problem because when i click on i try to switch or pick up another date when I click on OK, that gets dismissed and nothing changed. So let's go ahead and fix it. So the problem was in the uh, in the update here. Yes, that that was the mistake. So we we pick the date and then we dismiss. So I I I was you know I I thought I have added that for this button but i have done for this one so now that this was just a mistake now i have to download the app again and then install it so we can test it it's not a problem so now that i have fixed that mistake i know i can test it so here we want to say okay and then change the date okay and now that that didn't dismiss itself so update now you see to okay and 10 i can delete it of course delete the task and here you go delete this one so you can keep it clean like that so and i 
so it, it so the feeling of having a clean to do list is very very good and satisfying so now we have finished this video and it was a very long video and i hope you have learned a lot so i have been working on this video for like three days so if you like if you enjoyed it i appreciate if you can support my work uh, on coffee so i can keep creating this content so you'll find the link in the description down below it will take you to my coffee page where you can support my work and if you did i really appreciate that and this will help me a lot so i can create a lot of awesome videos on sqlite superbase anything you want so please i appreciate if you support my work and thank you so much for watching and i will see you on the next one and the link to my coffee page is in the description down below